Hi guys, welcome to lesson 1-5, adding and subtracting real numbers. Our objective for today is that I can find the sum and the difference of real numbers. All right. uh, vocabulary terms for today, we have absolute value. The absolute value is the distance of a number from zero on the number line. We have opposites. An opposite is a number that has the same distance from zero but is in the opposite direction on the number line. For example, negative three and positive three. Those are opposites. And lastly, we have the additive inverse. The additive inverse is that says states that opposites or add are or additive inverses of any number is known as negative a. When we add them together, the sum is zero. So negative three plus three is zero. Uh, that is an additive inverse. All right, so we're gonna take a look at uh, problem 2a here. Absolute value, this is just kind of a little refresher on what absolute value is. So the absolute value is the distance a number is away from zero. So the absolute value of 20 is just 20. The absolute value of negative 11 is just 11. It is 11 units away from zero on a number line. We can apply the absolute value to decimals as well. So negative 9.5 is 9.5 units away from zero. And we can also apply the absolute value to fractions. So the absolute value of 2 thirds is just going to be two-thirds. So if the number is positive already, as in examples A and D, the absolute value is just that number. If it is negative already, the absolute value is going to be its opposite. It'll be the positive distance, okay? Why don't you guys pause the video here, give letters A, B, and C a try. So for letter A, we have the absolute value of negative 23. That is just going to be 23. The absolute value of 3 and 2 fifths is going to be 3 and 2 fifths. If you want to write that as a decimal, you could write it, and that would be 3.4. Lastly, 3.14, the first three digits of pi, would be 3.14. Now we have a key concept out of the textbook here, adding real numbers. And when we are adding numbers with the same sign, we add their absolute values and we keep the sign. So three plus four is seven. Both were positive, the ending is positive. Negative three plus negative four, they're both negatives. We add the absolute values, which is three and four, gives us seven. We keep the sign of the two add-ins which is negative. When we're adding numbers with different signs, uh, we subtract their absolute values. Four minus three would be one. And then this, the sign is for the add end or the piece that has the greater absolute value. So four has a greater absolute value than negative three does. So it's going to be positive. In this case, Negative four has a greater absolute value than three does, so it'll be negative. All right, so let's take a look at a couple examples in problem two, adding real numbers. So we're gonna simplify each expression using addition. Those are our directions. So three plus four, three plus four gives us seven. Letter B, if we're looking at negative two plus negative three, we add together the absolute values of each number, so three plus two is five, and our sign on both of them is negative, so it's going to be a negative five. Letter C, negative three plus five. Now we've got one is a positive, one is a negative, so we're gonna subtract their absolute values. Five minus three is two. Five has the greater absolute value, so it's going to be a positive two. Letter D, negative five plus three. 
We subtract our absolute values. Five minus three is two. And five has the greater absolute value, so it's going to be a negative two. So why don't you guys try letters A, B, C, D, and E. F, I forgot to put a question in. Uh, and double check your answers and we'll see in a second. So seven and negative three, they are opposite signs. We are going to subtract them. So seven minus three is four and seven has the greater absolute value. So it's going to be a positive four. Negative 10 plus negative two, they both have the same sign. So we just need to ab add their absolute values. 10 plus two is 12. They are both negative, so it's negative 12. Letter C, we have negative 3.1 plus 6.7. Different sign, so we're gonna subtract their absolute value. 6.7 minus 3.1 is gonna give us 3.6. 6.7 has the greater absolute value, so it remains positive. Letter D, two-thirds plus negative five-sixths. Well, we gotta do some work with these fractions to make sure we can compare them. So let's convert two-thirds into six. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by two. So we have four-sixths plus negative five-sixths. So we have one is a negative, one is a positive, so we're gonna subtract. Five-sixths minus one-sixth or 5 6 minus 4 6 is 1 6 and 5 6 has the greater absolute value so it's going to be a negative 1 6 all right lastly we've got negative 2.5 plus negative 1.3 add the two absolute values together 2.5 plus 1.3 is going to be 3.8 and both of them are negatives, so it's going to be a negative 3.8. Okay, moving on, a couple other properties here. We have the inverse property of addition, which states that for every real number A, there is an additive inverse, the opposite of A, such that A plus the opposite of A is equal to zero. So we have two examples here, 14 plus negative 14 is zero. Negative 14 plus 14 is zero commutative property, doesn't matter which order they go in, they reach the same sum. Secondly, we've got our rule for subtracting real numbers, and to subtract a real number, we just need to add its opposite. So A minus B is the equivalent expression to A plus the opposite of B. All right, so in our examples here, we have three minus five is the same as saying three plus a negative five which would give us negative two, okay? All right, so problem three is gonna be subtracting real numbers and we wanna simplify each expression. So let's just start with three minus five. We're gonna change this into an addition problem. So it'll be three plus a negative five. And now we're doing the same thing we did in the previous uh, problem, we are just adding the or subtracting the absolute values and taking whichever one is greater so 5 minus 3 is 2 and it'll be negative letter b here what do we see we have a double negative so we need to pay attention to that take this uh skew it same change opposite i like to just draw a giant plus sign in between 3 plus 5 is 8 Okay. Same thing for letter C. We've got 3.2 minus negative 9.8. Well, we can change this to addition and take the opposite of this. Make it 3.2 plus 9.8. 3.2 plus 9.8 is 13. Same for letter D, we can change this to a plus sign. So four plus six is 10.
So why don't you guys give A, B, and C a try, and then come on back and we will check your answers. So for letter A, we've got negative three minus a negative six. We have a double negative there, so we need to skew it. So we have negative three plus six. So six minus three is three. Six has the greater absolute value, so it's going to remain positive. Letter B, negative four thirds minus five six. Well, let's convert this negative four thirds into six. We'll multiply it by two over two. Hey, that's the identity property of multiplication. So we have eight over six. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it an addition problem. So we say plus the opposite of five six. So plus negative five six. So now we have two terms, two add-ins that are both negative, so it's going to be a negative answer. Eight plus five is 13, six. And you could just leave it as the improper fraction. You don't need to write it as a decimal. You don't have to uh, uh, write it as a mixed number. You could just leave it as the improper. Just make sure that it is reduced whenever we have fractions. All right, 1.7 minus 4.6. We can convert this uh, into an addition problem. So we have 1.7 plus negative 4.6, and that is going to be negative 2.9. Okay, our last problem for the day is going to be a couple word problems, adding and subtracting real numbers. So we have a story. We have a robot submarine that is going to dive 803 feet to the ocean floor. Then it rises 215 feet as the water gets shallower. The sub then dives 2,619 feet into a deep crevice. And then finally it rises 734 feet to photograph a crack in the wall of the crevice. We want to know what is the location of the crack in relation to sea level. So we start off with we are at sea level and we dive 803 feet. So we go negative 803 feet. Our next step is it is rising 215 feet. So we add 215. The sub dives 2619. So when we're diving, we're going down, so we're subtracting 2,619. And lastly, it's going to rise 734. And we're gonna photograph that crack. So use your calculator. We've got negative 803 plus 215 minus 2619 and adding 734. And we come up with negative 2473. So what does that tell us? It is that the crack is 2473 feet below sea level. All right, second example here is another one. We've got uh, Taylor Municipal Airport has an air elevation of 914 feet. A plane takes off and climbs 453 feet to fly, by, fly over Huntley Middle School here. The plane then descends 325 feet to annoy the people over on the golf course. Then the plane rises 458 feet and flies east. And lastly, it's going to descend 742 feet and land at the DuPage County or Airport. We want to know what is the elevation of the DuPage County or Airport. So we're going to start off with here in DeKalb at Taylor, you are at 914 feet above sea level. 
We are going to take off and the plane will climb 453 feet to fly over HMS. The plane descends or goes down 325 feet so that it annoys the golf golfers. And then the plane rises 458 feet before it flies east. And then lastly, when it comes in and lands, it's going to land and descend 742 feet. So we plug all these numbers in, 914 plus 453 minus 325 plus 458 minus 742. Type it all into your calculator and you find that the altitude at the DuPage Airport is 758 feet above sea level. Make sure that you include units with your answers. The question is, what is the elevation of the DuPage Airport? We want to know what is the elevation, and the units tells us where it is. So we're talking about feet, not meters, not fathoms, not miles. We're talking about feet. Okay. Last thing, guys, as always. Uh, rate your level of understanding after watching this lesson and working through the practice problems, one to four scale. Write any questions that you have that you can bring up in class. And write yourself a paragraph summarizing what it is that we did in this lesson. All right, that's all for tonight. We will see you in class tomorrow.